the century in late April, Des Moines, Iowa has become track central to athletes of all generations as they come to compete on the track and in the field. This year, the Drake Relays has its decidedly international flair as the best of the best from the 2012 Olympics have been reunited in this Midwest track enclave. For some of the world's most marquee athletes, rematches from the London Games will be the order of the day. Heroes, champions, record holders will be joined by hometown hero Lolo Jones. And a rising phenom, Mary Kane, who dream of joining the pantheon of Olympic greats. This is the 104th running of the Drake Relays. So here we are at the Drake Relays presented by Hy-Vee. And we've got a sold out Drake Stadium bathed in glorious sunshine today, tempered by a slight southerly breeze, but conditions are near perfect here. And here are some of the clashes we're bringing you today. Those London Games rematches, Aries Merritt, the Olympic champion, Jen Schur, the Olympic champion of the vault, Brittany Reese, an Olympic champion, and Dawn Harper, Kelly Wells against homegirl, Lolo Jones. Well, let's take a look at the uh, first event, the uh, women's 400 meter hurdles, the world record 52-34 by Petronkina, 10 years old now. Carrie Carter's world best 54-71 for this year is vulnerable, Dwight. I, I would think so. The conditions are very, very good. Well, there is Zuzana Hechnova, the Olympic bronze medalist. She is uh, Stars' favorite here, I guess, the Czech. She goes in lane four, the 26-year-old from Prague. Has raced a lot indoors, had a really good winter, in good form. And inside of her is American Olympian Taria Brown, just 23 years of age, a little bit of a surprise making the Olympic final, finishing sixth in London. Well, this is a very strong field and a strong event for the USA. They had second, fifth, and sixth in that Olympic final. There's the lineup. Taria Brown goes in lane three. Good lane draw that for her, just inside the Czech Hezhenova in lane four. Watch out, too, for Tiffany Williams there in lane five. Williams is the other Olympian in this race. She was an Olympian in 2008. 2.30 start time if you need that much time. Okay, if you don't, we can go over Away first time, long hold in the blocks there. And certainly away pretty quickly by the looks of things is uh, Tiffany Williams in lane five. She's already up on Ellie, Ellen Wortham outside her in lane six. Getting into a nice rhythm now as Hezhnova in the all-black there, center of picture in lane four from the Czech Republic. Williams is off and out quickly, but she's now starting to have a little problem with her rhythm on that back stretch. There's a bit of a breeze blowing at their back down the back stretch. Hezhnova leading for my money, although inside her, Terea Brown, the sixth placer of the London Games, also going well. Hezhnova now pushing hard. She's very strong, the Czech, has perhaps the best flat speed of this field over 400 meters, and she leads well as she comes into the straight. And you were absolutely right. She really made the move in the turn. Terea Brown is really going to have to do some work over this 10th hurdle try and pull her in. Well, Hezhnova leading well. She's picked up where she left off from the indoor season. And remember, it only ended some six or eight weeks ago. And that's a big, big win. Look at the margin. 54-42 for the Czech. And Hezhnova, Zuzana Hezhnova there, setting a new Drake Relays record by almost a second. Big, big win that, and conditions are very, very good indeed out there. Pretty windy up here in our commentary position, but I think down on the track, not nearly as bad. Yeah, the flag's not blowing nearly like they were on Friday, and that is just, that is a new best time in the world this year for Heshnova, and on the back stretch, she really played it cool. She had Tiffany Williams out there to rabbit her a little bit. And then when she went into the far turn, that's when she really put on the gas. Taria Brown was in per perfect position to really watch Heshnova and make a move when she did. But as you mentioned, Tim, all that winter competition really very, very helpful for the Czech. And of course, she has the confidence of being an Olympic medalist from last summer. Well, she's a pretty good uh, pentathlete, is uh, Hezhnova, but uh, she just needed the one discipline today to clear those barriers well, drive hard to the line there, and win by the best part of a second from Terea Brown, really living up to her uh, billing as Olympic bronze medalist. We can confirm that result for you now. 54.41 for Zuzana Hezhnova. Terea Brown, 55.27, a solid run in second place. Ellen Wortham in third place. 
Well, she looks absolutely delighted with that one, Hejnova. And uh, that's a pretty good way to start the afternoon. More shortly. The 2013 Drake Relays, brought to you by High V, where there's a helpful smile in every aisle. Well, here we are with these 104th Drake Relays. Glorious sunshine, sold-out stadium. My name's Tim Hutchings, beside me Dwight Stones, and of course Paul Swangard, new member of our team for the Drake Relays this year. And there's a wonderful new theme for the Relays this year. It's the Olympic rematches from London 2012. And none comes better than in the women's 100-meter hurdles, where local girl Lolo Jones, who was fourth in those games last year, how frustrating is that, against her teammates, who was second and third in the same race at the Games. And Mary Kane, well, a teenage sensation, looking to become an Olympian, perhaps, in 2016 in Rio. She's in the 1,500 metres against all three of the US Olympians from London. Well, Dwight, uh, three Olympic gold medalists in action in the field. That is some boast. Yeah, especially in the early spring, two of them pole vaulters. Jen Schur, the American who just set the world indoor record in the pole vault back in March. From France, Renaud Lavalani, who had dominated the event for the three years leading up to the Games, finally gets the gold in London. And then American Christian Taylor, who has just been unbeatable in the triple jump, both a world champion and an Olympic champion now in the triple jump. And Paul, I know you'll be looking forward in particular to a great men's mile coming up. We've got a good field featuring Nick Willis, three-time Olympian, was the silver medalist back in Beijing in 2008. He feels if conditions are right for his first visit at Drake, he may go after that record of 351.71 set by Alan Webb back in 2007. Well, that's a tall order. There's a bit of breeze here in this stadium. But let's take a look at what took place yesterday here in the Drake Stadium. Some wonderful clashes and one or two surprises. So coming up, perhaps the biggest clash of the night. All three medalists from the London Olympics last August go in this men's 110-meter hurdles. Aries Merritt, the world record holder and Olympic champion, goes in lane four. He had a perfect season in 2012. There is Merritt. How can his 2013 season go? He's run 13.37 already this year. That was uh, just a week ago in Baton Rouge. And again, a long season ahead of him. He has to pick his spots very carefully. Andrew Riley, the fastest time in the world this year, 13.32. That might go here, although they are running into a headwind. They're in their blocks now. Partman in three, Merritt in four, Richardson in lane five, the world champion in the light blue there. But Merritt, the favourite in four. And Richardson again there may be going off early in lane five. We've already had one faulty start. Nobody was uh, accorded a full start. Under international rules, of course, there should be a disqualification. This is a London Games rematch, and there's a lot at stake here, I think, more than people realize. Aries Merritt, the Olympic champion, goes in lane four. Jason Richardson, the world champion from the previous year in uh, Korea, had to settle for silver last year in London. He goes in lane five, side by side, Merritt and Richardson. A real treat, this early season clash between the Olympic champion and the world champion. And a red card for Richardson, he's disqualified, oh my word, he's gone. What a huge disappointment. Late April for the world champion, Richardson is gone. Dear, oh dear. Richardson full starting then, we're back down to seven men. Third time of asking now, Andrew Riley in one, Ryan Wilson in two, Hansley Parchman in three, the Olympic bronze medalist, there is the world champion. Oh, so, so annoyed with himself. Nobody else to blame. Aries Merritt, the Olympic champion, goes in four. There's a chance to see that full start once again. Send for a picture there, watch. Yeah, no doubt about it, and he knew it. You have nobody to blame but yourself. Way cleanly this time, a little bit of a delay in the blocks there maybe by Darius Merritt in the centre of picture in the navy blue going well over in lane one is Andrew Riley as well. Riley giving up Merritt a real race here indeed on the near side in yellow, Brathwaite coming through. It's going to be very tight to the line and Riley over on the far side takes it. The winning time 13.44 or something like that, 13.43 by the looks of things. That uh, was into a strong headwind as expected. Riley there into a minus 3.2 win, no wonder. It was uh, not a particularly quick time, but the significance of that run, probably one of the biggest wins of his young life.
24 year old Jamaican Andrew Riley over to the right of picture there Dwight came out of the blocks well and held it together really well despite the sort of isolated lane draw and I think that even though Aries Merritt got his rhythm through the middle of the race he just gave so much up at the start Riley down there in lane one almost no one can see him he just kept driving through and Merritt is trying to catch him on the outside Ryan Braithwaite also making a good run but it was all Andrew Riley on the inside lane and boy does he love this track he won the NCAA titles in the 110 meter hurdles and the 100 meters last year here the first man to ever do that in the same NCAA meet as a senior at Illinois and boy he has really taken some scouts today. Well, what a way to kick off the evening. Drama in the first pro event of the evening. What does Dan O'Brien think about it down on the infield? Dan. All right, Aries, any, any hurdle race, it's not without its issues. Right away, Jason Richardson disqualified. I know it's blowing hard down there at the start. <laughs> tell, tell me about that start line and what happened on that false start. Um, I don't know. He just seemed kind of wiggly in the blocks, and it's to be expected this field is pretty good for this early in the season. So I don't think a lot of people are ready to run, obviously. But, I mean, the crowd is great. The stadium is great. A lot of good fans. The wind was very strong. Yes, it was. <laughs> Almost a perfect season last year. What do you do to prepare to, to repeat that season? Oh, well, I just keep training hard. Had a little scary indoor with a little cramp in my hamstring, which caused me to forego my indoor season. So I'm, I'm kind of back in my training. But I'll be ready when it counts. I'm sure you will. Good luck this season. Thank you. Well, we can check that result for you now, Riley. It did indeed the winner by five one hundredths of a second. The Jamaican, 13.43. Aries Merritt in second. Brian Brathwaite, 13.55. And, of course, Richardson disqualifying himself. And there's the race without Richardson. You see on the right of your screen, Andrew Riley getting out to a great start. Of course, he's a sprinter, so he starts well. Aries Merritt a little bit lethargic out of the blocks, just working his way through, trying to get in his rhythm. And then on the far left, that's Ryan Braithwaite making a real run near the end of the race. But it was all Andrew Riley. He's a good-sized guy that probably wasn't as affected by the wind as Aries Merritt was. Well, big prize money up for these pro races as well at these 104th Drake relays. But uh, Andrew Riley of Jamaica making it a perfect start to the evening, for him at least. No próximo week. Vault here in Des Moines. And a very interested spectator was Jen Schur, the world indoor record holder. She was not taking part, but standing by. This is Yara, Yara Slay Silva from Cuba. She was a silver medalist at these London Games. She has a great mall vault, winning on a first attempt at 15, 9, 3 quarters of an inch. It's an event record here in Des Moines. And this is our first London Games rematch on the field. The silver medalist versus the gold medalist, and Silva was struggling with the bar at 15, two and a quarter. Everybody was struggling. Big tail wins. When you got a big tail win, pushes that pull tip down. Everybody rushes those last few steps and they don't get the penetration they need. But she started jumping very, very well once she actually got through the first couple of heights. And this was the opening height for Jen Schur, hoping to take advantage of that win. But a third attempt she went down to on her opening height. And she makes it, but just with a little bit to spare. So Jen Schur struggling early and also a victim of these difficult wins. Here's Silva's third attempt at 15-6. We saw a lot of third attempt makes for her. When she's on, she's on. She gets her hip height very high. She was using the wind to her advantage. And Jen Schur, now her third attempt at 15-6 and a quarter, her second height, and she just was having so much trouble with pole selection and with her step with the wind. And you can see here, her hips never even get to the level of the bar. So that was the end. One clearance, six vaults for Jen Shore. The, bar, the went up, bar went up to 15-11, a new national record for the Cuban. Everybody was out of the competition after 15 feet. It was really a two-person competition. Silva flies over 15-11. We saw a couple attempts at 16 feet, one inch. She bowed out, not taking a third attempt, but 15-11, the best jump in the world this year. And there are the results. And afterwards, Dan spoke to a disappointed Jen Shore. It's so hard coming out this early, first meet of the year, first meet on the long run with everything thrown at you right now. So, you know, um, I guess you got to start somewhere. You know, you opted to you opted to sit out of the mall vault. Yes. Are you healthy? No, I actually hurt my hamstring a week ago. So that's why I sat out of the mall vault, pulled out of Kansas and tried to come out today and jump. So, you know, I think it's time to go home and heal it up. In the men's high jump, it was 2008 Olympian Dusty Jonas, who always seems to jump well early in the spring. I was sitting next to Brian Brown, meet director. This tied his meet record. Great story for Dusty coming off an Achilles injury last year. 
He has a best of seven, eight and three quarters trying to get back to that level. He wins easily over world champion from 2007, Donald Thomas of the Bahamas. Then another London Games matchup between the gold medalist Brittany Reese of the U.S. and Janae Deloach, who is now Janae Deloach and Sue Cup. She got married in the fall, and it was very tough again with the wins. They had it at their back, but this is a second round jump for Janae Deloach Sue Cup. Well, what a great day to get a personal best win dated or not. Janae wanted to go over seven meters, and she would come up just short of that, only jumping 22-8. This was her best jump on the second attempt. And that jump held up for four rounds until the sixth and final round. The Olympic champion is very tough to beat. She's won the last two world championships and the Olympic gold. And in the sixth and final run, she had a little bit of something left for Janae Delokesuka. Well, how many times?